K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. All right, folks, we're live. It is Memorial Day, and we've decided to do a very special edition of It's Clobber in Time because we haven't managed to find time to do that one for about the last month. So I am joined today by Dave Brown, uh, host of Around the Ring, also a, um, uh, oh, 98X, the Friends music show. I keep forgetting to plug that one. <laughs> yes, yeah, K, uh, K98X, the Fringe uh some year, someday, we'll have its own website. Maybe, we'll uh, we'll get there. But uh, yeah, yeah, dude, I've been doing that, and uh, that's also where our good friend Steve has his uh, his local music show um, uh, off, the off the record. record. Which he was thinking about changing the name because apparently someone else has a show called Off the Record. I was like, just put Oklahoma at the end of it for Pete's sake. Um, but yeah, yeah, so. Uh, and uh, around the ring, I'll be putting up a new episode probably later today. I'm, uh, in fact, I'm in the process of working on my graphic for the episode right now. So uh, I did not get that done earlier. Slacker. Boo on me. Yeah, I know. Slacker. All right. So huh, lots of stuff we're going to talk about today. Do you want to start with the political stuff or you want to start with the fun stuff? Because I'm honestly a little bit political out after this weekend. I'm just being honest. <laughs> Well, what? so for those that don't know, uh, the rowdy one here, uh, who, by the way, is the other host of this show, um, and we are, If for those of you who don't know, a little back history, if you're tuning into K98 Talk for the first time, uh, the two of us actually started this whole mess, uh, God, what was it, two and a half, three years ago? Headed towards three now, sir. That's worth three. Yeah, we started a a uh, Facebook page and uh, it morphed into a podcast, and that's the Finding Common Ground show that is now uh, co-hosted uh, with Rowdy One, Ricky Robinson, and Bryce. And I don't know Bryce's last name. Robbins. Robbins. Thank you. Uh, a bunch of R people in the show. Man, what's up with that? So uh, yeah, that's on Saturday mornings, and uh, because of my work schedule, I had to drop out. But I tell you what, you guys are doing a great job there. So. Thank you for for keeping that going. And uh, so we decided that we needed to do a show together because we just missed hanging out with each other. And that's this show. And we don't really want to always talk about politics, but there have been a few political things I wanted to talk about. Plus, I wanted to hear about the the whole Southern Republican Circle Jerk convention that that you just spent the last five days at. Uh, so <laughs> I want to hear a little were, bit about that. I knew you were <laughs> going to get your shot in there somewhere. Well, All right. Know. So, yeah. Uh, had had to be done. Had to be done. I apologize. Uh, so yeah, then we're gonna talk about some fun stuff. Uh, yeah, you're gonna go see Age of Ultron later today. Uh, yes, it starts in a couple of hours, so I will be there. All right. Shortly. What what theater are you going to? Uh, cheapest one around. <laughs> AMC oh, so. sixteen. Ah, that's a good one. That's actually I think that's where I went to see it. 
the one at what used to be known as Crossroads. Yeah, that's, uh, where I'm, that's where I've been going for a lot of movies lately when I figured out I could get tickets there for half the price. Yeah, it's before 4 o'clock. It's $4 or like 425 or something. You can't beat that. And, I mean, yeah, it's you don't quite get the experience of the Warren Theater, especially the Warren IMAX. But, you know, $4 versus 14 Well, this one's actually a 3D movie, so it'll be like 7 something a ticket, which is still like half the price of the Warren. So. Yeah. Well, I have seen it. I will tell you it is good. It is very good. I admittedly did not enjoy it as much as the first one, I don't think. Um, I'm sure part of my problem is I was bad and – I found a stream of a European version of it because it came out in the rest of the world before it came out here. So I actually watched a really piss poor quality version of it uh, held with someone's phone probably. And so I already knew what was going to happen. And when I went to see it, I went with my son and we went to an eight o'clock showing one night. And just to show you how old I'm getting, I actually nodded off a few times during the movie because I was so freaking tired. I, <laughs> I'd i been at work that day. I was tired, and I'm old and sad. But it is very good. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I will say, though, after having watched it and then finished watching uh, this season's plethora of comic book shows, I will say that I believe television is a much better medium uh, for uh, bringing comic books to live action than movies. You have a much – they have much more time to tell better stories and to get more vested into the characters. Uh, so in other words, I would rather – as much as I look forward to each and every Marvel film that comes out, I would much rather watch a season of Arrow or The Flash or Constantine, Sons of Bitches for canceling that, than, uh, than, than the, the Marvel movies. It's just I enjoy them more. And of course, I'm I'm a DC fanboy, so it doesn't help, yeah, you know, or hurt, I should say. Uh, but so yeah, it I think you'll enjoy it. It's good. Uh, Joss Whedon did a great job, as always. I mean, what what has he done that hasn't been awesome? Let's 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 ask that question for a moment. Is there anything that you've seen that Joss Whedon was a part of that wasn't great? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I think the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie is about the only thing I can think of. But even I rewatched that a few years ago and it's still really quirky and the things that are wrong with it had nothing to do with his script and had everything to do with the fact it was a Luke Perry vehicle because at the time Luke Perry was was a hot commodity thanks to Beverly Hills 90210 and uh, and it was just not well executed, not in the way it should have been. But yeah, Joss Whedon is Joss Whedon's the man. So. So yeah, so tell us all about the uh, Southern. It's, what was the official title to the Southern Republican Leadership Conference? Twenty Leadership Conference, and what exactly is that? Well, basically, it's a, a get together for some of the, the higher ranking uh, party holders. You know, as far as the ones actually holding offices, to kind of come together with the base and try to get everybody energized and stirred up. It didn't exactly go as planned this year because. Unfortunately, um, Mr. Rand Paul, who is diametrically opposed to the uh, the Patriot Act, did a filibuster and thought he had managed to kill at least sections of the Patriot Act or make it nearly impossible for the sections that he was uh, opposed to to be passed. Well, since the current head of the Senate, who happens to be a Republican, actually likes the Patriot Act, he did an emergency re emergency recall for a roll call vote. So half the senators that were going to appear over the weekend, actually all of the senators that were going to appear over the weekend, unless they managed to do it on Friday, um, were not able to appear. So it kind of it, it kind of left everything just just a little flat in my opinion because we didn't get to hear from uh, Rubio, we didn't get to hear from Cruz. Oh, we got uh, Cruz's father got to speak. Uh, sadly, nobody told me until after I had already left the event that my press credentials would have gotten me into the dinner where they spoke, or I would have actually covered that as well, because I didn't get that email until much, much later in the day. The oh, one, that sucks. The, well, the, well, I mean, part of it's my fault. I sent everything to my business email instead of my personal email, so it, that one's not ported to my phone. So there were times that when the internet connection was screwing up that I wasn't able to check my email. Um, I will say that this being my first experience with an event like this, I hate to say it, but conservatives are not very well organized. 
it was a bit of a mess. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure how this stuff works on the liberal side of things, but it's like it, it took me two attempts to register because I went in, showed them the email that I was told to bring, told them that I was uh, supposed to be covering it as a member of the press. They did a standard registration for me, which got me in the door. But then when I went upstairs to go try to set up for Radio Row and tried to go into the press room, uh, they were like, where are you going? I'm like, where am I going? Here's my email. I'm supposed to be here. They told me to bring this up here. I'm like, no, you're supposed to do that downstairs. I was like, I was just downstairs. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I had to go oh. back down, get the right get the right information put into the system, come back up, and then I couldn't find the people because there were only uh, certain, there were only like five or six booths available for Radio Row. So the, the plan was, since a lot of folks were coming in and covering it in segments, we were supposed to be hot bunking in those booths. Well, the good news is, once I found somebody, apparently half the people that were going to show up didn't show up um, based on the weather, and I don't know, maybe it's because it's in Oklahoma. I mean, you, I I understand it's a good thing for our state to get something like this, but let's face it, it's not like it's not, we're not pretty much going to fall completely Republican in anything that we vote for anyway. So, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. So, a lot of the folks that were supposed to cover it didn't show up. I did get one interesting picture that I thought you would find amusing i'm still waiting for it to be sent over so i can actually make the caption that i wanted to make for it we were supposed to be sitting next to npr all weekend but all we got was this big empty table that said npr on it and the first thing i thought when uh grouchy's daughter took a picture because she was working as our pa i was like hey npr hosts are a lot like their listeners invisible <laughs> hardy har har i wonder why they didn't show up i don't I mean, know they, they weren't there at all dude they were just it was just like going i'm like well, it's interesting i guess I don't know. Huh. Maybe they felt like they'd be outnumbered. <laughs> okay, first of all, NPR is not a liberal organization. Let's just just stop that right there. That I, I love that myth that conservatives love to push. Oh, NPR is a whole bunch of lib labs. No. Yes, a lot of liberals listen to NPR, but if you really listen to their news coverage, it is one of the few organizations that does a very good job at being as unbiased as humanly possible. Careful, folks. Dave's getting his back up. <laughs> and, and you're getting lots of messages on your telephone. Dude, my phone never stops. I need to turn it down. Dude, that, th that sucker is loud. But that's okay. You're a popular man, and that's a good thing. Not, not really. <laughs> Sometimes it does have its moments. But, yeah, I kind of forgot to turn the volume down on it, so I guess I need to do that now. Okay. So anyway, I mean, honestly, I I listen to NPR sometimes, usually for the news coverage, because honestly, most of their 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 talking head hosts kind of bore me to death, and I understand that their news coverage is a, is not really slanted, but most of their hosts really do lean the other way. I mean, I can't say much about it because we've tried to be as fair and balanced as we can here, and it seems like most of the attention that we are attracting are conservatives, and most of the liberals that I talk to that have shows want to know when they're going to get paid. I'm so confused by that. <laughs> Well, maybe they 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 just make the assumption because you're a conservative, you're you know all about the money, and so they want to milk that. I I don't know. I don't know why people are doing that. I mean, it's as far as I'm concerned, we have been uh, we we've, we've had very good graces uh, to get as far as we have with this thing, and it's all thanks to the hard work of one rowdy Ricky Robinson. So that is uh, that's my good word to you for the day. Dude, can I, can I just be completely honest for a second? Uh -huh. I, I knew I could make this happen, but I had no idea it was going to get anywhere near as big as it has the potential of getting now. It's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. We need, I mean, we need that. It's, uh, it's fun. It's, and it's also, it's nice to be working with someone that has no ego about it. So, yeah. Um, so radio hosts, if potential radio hosts, if you were looking for a place to talk your chiz, you should uh, come talk to us and uh, especially some liberals because it would be nice to have something other than a bunch of yammering conservatives on the station. Oh, oh well, I don't know if I told you about this, but actually uh, J.D. and Stacy are kind of excited about the fact that we have a couple of liberals and they are hoping that maybe we can get a couple of more. Because what we're going to do since my show for some reason, and I still don't understand this, has been the only one that's been able to get on iHeart because no matter how hard I try, they turn down every other one. I don't understand it. I really don't because there are some shows 
on our network that I personally think are even better than mine, and for some reason they keep getting turned down. But we did come up with a thought, because, you know, I'm no longer doing the solo show on Saturdays. Right. So we've come up with the idea of making a panel show based on that brand. And at first I didn't know how we were going to pull it off, then we had a brainstorming session right before I went in. Uh, Sometime probably uh, mid-June, maybe 1st of July, we're going to launch a show on Saturday called America Off the Rails, the Roundhouse Edition. I don't know if you're familiar with what a roundhouse is, but back when trains were still uh, coal-fired, they actually had a a building they would go into to be uh, loaded, offloaded, and turned around. Yeah. Um, So, And that was Stacy's idea, because I was like, I don't know how to tie the brand into a panel show. And she's like, we can call it the roundhouse edition. I'm like, I don't know why I never thought of that. But anyway, so the plan is we're going to have a moderator, which will probably be this guy, at least two other hosts from Talk, um, one one host from an outside network, and then we're also going to start trying to network in some of the bigger named uh, web-based news services and just do like a rotating panel once a week on Saturdays under that banner, oh. put it out over iHeart and everywhere else because it'll still be part of the brand that's actually made it to iHeart. I like that. That's That's great. I actually like it, too. It's a concept they've had for a while, and they were trying to pitch it to Wayne, and then when they came over here, they were like, we have an idea. And I said, hey, we've been trying to figure out a way to get a panel show to work anyway. So, And not only that, now that uh, Off the Rails is on amfm247.com, every once in a while I can send one of those episodes over that I like and give everybody more exposure. So, Sweetness. That sounds awesome. Very cool. Because, you know, we rule and all. But sadly still, I'm not going to be able to be part of that because I work on Saturdays. Yeah, well, at some point your schedule might change. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I actually admit I really like working on Saturdays. Um, if nothing else, because it gives me Mondays off. And, and I like having a day off during the week. Yeah, I didn't realize how much I was going to miss that until I didn't have one because it's so hard to get shit done on the weekends. Let's just be real. Oh, my God, it is. It's like, yeah, it is really hard to get crap done on the weekends um, because so many places are not open. Either that or the ones that are have like lines a million miles long because half the other people have weekends off. Uh, Yeah, post office, I'm looking at you. (laughs) Well, I'm looking at the post office at least one other place because I can look in two places at once. So take that. Oh, yeah, because you got mad skills there. Oh, man. So, yeah, Um, I guess. Well, I mean, as far as now now that we've gotten completely off track, back to the Southern Republican Leadership Conference. Yeah. Our biggest get was um, Grouchy was able to interview Ambassador Bolton. I don't know if you know who that is. James Bolton. No, not the singer. John Bolton. (laughs) I do start with a J. But anyway, so so anyway. An, so anyway, he um he actually contacted them. They responded, told them they were willing to do the interview. So since he got it done, I let him take point on it, and it turned out to be a really really good interview. You can find that on the Spark Radio Network SoundCloud page for the moment. We also discussed it on yesterday's America Off the Rails. If you want to listen to the full episode, um now for this evening, I haven't um. I do believe I'm still planning on doing a show today. I know it's Memorial Day, also my birthday, but, you know, I haven't done one in a few days. Uh, so, cause Happy JD, birthday, J- you crazy fool. JD and Stacy filled in for me, and it's only from 6 to 7 anyway. So I think tonight I will actually have the interview that I did with uh, the state labor commissioner. And that boy is fired up, let me tell you. Um, Ooh, last, okay. What's he fired up about? Well, he's a... He's a... Um, a uh, me trying to Words. talk to you or something. Um, Scott Walker is who basically he's a big he's a big Walker guy, and I I told him I, and during the interview, and at this point he actually gets pretty close to putting his finger directly in my face because I told him I said look Walker would probably be my choice he really would if he would declare I want a commitment damn it I mean you know he's saying now he's not even going to be able to know, tell us one thing or, or another until June. And this dude just like completely fired up. And he's like, are you seriously telling me that you don't think he's going to declare? I said, no, but I'm not going to make a decision until he actually does because I'm not going to back a guy who can't make up his mind. So, yeah, it was an interesting interview because he was really, really animated over Scott Walker. So So he likes Scott Walker's junk. I'm not sure what he likes about him. We'll we'll, we'll leave that open for interpretation. 
Because, yeah, I'd actually like to maybe interview the guy again at some point. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my opinions are mine and mine alone and do not necessarily represent the opinions of K98 Talk, management, or staff. <laughs> I may have you record that and send that over from now on. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> we have to we have to be careful here, folks. I mean, not really, but at the same time, you know, I did, the, the one thing that I will say is I did manage to make some pretty good connections. I have um, email addresses for all of the uh, Republican candidates, campaign managers, so I've slowly or quietly started sending them emails to the ones that we weren't able to talk to in person at the convention to try to see if they would be willing to come on one of the shows. Um I've also gotten a card from the governor here who I actually met in person who surprisingly was a lot nicer in person than I expected her to be. I'm, I, that actually doesn't surprise me at all. I'm sure she's a very nice lady, but the queen is a horrible governor. But uh, Again, uh, my opinions well, are my own. Well, no, I mean, in, I mean I, I've never hidden the fact that I don't like all of her policies, but I actually had people that – I don't know if they were calling me a name or calling her a name on my Facebook page when I changed that to my profile picture. And I'm like, look, if I had the opportunity, I would take a picture with Obama and then love to get the chance to sit down and interview him, too. And I don't like any of his policies either. But why would you not take the opportunity to try to actually get to know somebody? I mean, and I, yeah, no kidding. I mean, I, did, I got to talk to her for about four or five minutes off the record, got to know her a little bit and thought she was. Rather amiable. Um, since she wasn't able to do an interview, she had one of her staffers come by and give me a card later in the day. And they had thought that they might be able to get her to sit down on Saturday, but they were so busy scrambling to try to backfill all the holes that popped up. All she really ever had a chance to do was do the opening uh, in the morning again. And then she was scrambling for pretty much the rest of the day trying to fill everything in. But I was told that if I made a contact at a later time, that they would love, they would love to sit down and do an interview, whether it was done over the phone, through Skype, or even as a pre-record. So, sweet. Well, hey, you know that's that's awesome because we need more of that kind of stuff. That's uh, and that's great. You know, and whether you like someone's policies or not, that doesn't mean you can't get along with them as a person. This is something that we have often discussed. And uh, yeah, I'm sure she's a very nice lady. Um, you know, yeah, I'm. I don't know her personally. I'm never going to meet her, most likely. But and that's fine. Um, but yeah, and I, I wish her nothing but but success and and all that good stuff. So yeah, so that'll be cool. I'm, uh, it'll be good for us to get an interview with her because uh, that's a pretty big deal. Well, not only that, but now Ambassador Bolton knows who we are. And he's got some pretty big connections throughout all kinds of media because that's actually – during the interview, he specifically tells Grouchy the reason why he had wound up stepping down uh, as far as a candidate because he did declare and then he undeclared uh, was because he basically saw the writing on the wall and felt that he could do more for the party um, – by being uh, the media coverage guy who went on to places like Fox News and everywhere else and kind of touted for whoever he felt he needed to tout for. And also, he's really, really good at fundraising, so he's decided to keep that role. Um, so, I mean, I, I respected the interview, and actually, Grouchy did a really good job with it. If you haven't heard it yet, like I said, you can just listen to the interview by itself <clears throat> if you go to our SoundCloud page. And that way you don't have to sit through a whole show where it's played unless you want to. I'm pretty sure that will also be the featured interview for him this week. Unless he gets a hold, because uh, I know that he's got a chance to interview Carly Fiorna as well. I think I said her last name right. I could be wrong, though. But um, she was he was the only one that was there on Saturday, of course, because my son <laughs> graduated. She wasn't able to sit down with him as they had planned because he had been working with her as well. Um, but because of the fact that he was completely flexible and said, look, I don't care if we do it over Skype. I don't care if we do it over the phone. I don't care if it's a pre-record. I just want a chance to sit down and talk to you. So his campaign manager or her campaign manager specifically told him the fact that he was being that openly flexible meant that it should be really easy to get something put together, especially if it was only going to be like a 10 or 15 minute segment. So that is one thing that's worked to our favor because I sat to the, I sat next to a guy who actually was in terrestrial radio and while he was very amiable to us, anytime he was dealing with any of the staff there or anytime he was dealing with anybody's campaign manager, he was a complete tool. Literally. See, and I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand why would you – you're someone going out to get a story. Your whole job as a journalist 
is – if he is a journalist or even a talk show host is to produce a show that people will want to listen to so that your parent company can sell advertising. So why would you be a jerk to someone who will potentially bring ears to your program? That makes no sense. Why piss off a client? Why piss off a customer? I mean sometimes it's a good thing. You just have to make someone angry for whatever reason. But that – yeah, and maybe it's just some of that old school radio mentality, which is something – when I was uh, going to school for, uh, for broadcast journalism and my interactions with people that worked in radio, they were a-holes. Uh, not going to lie. I did – a lot of them were just really – pretentious, stuck-up snobs thought what they were doing was so super important and uh, and that's something that – and that's part of like the cultural mindset in that industry that they have and um, I'm sure some of it has had to change in the last few years because of, you know, social media and the – the way that things like radio and newspaper and all that are just not as important as they used to be. They don't have the power that they used to have. Uh, so they're having to realize, oh, we can't be dicks to people and still expect them to turn on our shows because they have so many other options. Well, I mean, that's that's the thing to go back to something that you said earlier where, you know, it's it's nice to work with somebody who doesn't have an ego. You'd be surprised how many people point that out. And I just... I, I, has the world really gone that crazy where everybody who tries to do anything like this does it for all the wrong reasons? Because everybody that I've talked to, for the most part, that's worked in other, even with other internet stations, have said basically it was a platform for the main guy to have a voice and everything else was window dressing. I'm like, what? I don't understand that. I really don't. I mean, if if I was just trying to market America off the rails, then I could understand that because I could do that without stepping on anybody else's toes and I could just be like, hey, here's my show. I think it rocks. I think I rock. Here, go listen to it. Tell me what you think. But these guys are building entire platforms and then they're making it all about them. Yeah, see, that doesn't make any sense. When Why would you do that when you could simply make a podcast and there are tons of podcast services out there that you could use and you could have – you know, once a week, multiple times a week. And there are people that have very, that make money off of doing podcasts. So why would you try to create a 24 hour internet radio station if your whole purpose is to make people like your show? That, that to me, one, that's a whole, whole lot of work and a whole lot of expense for something you could do more successfully for a lot cheaper. So I, I don't get it. Yeah, that uh, that I don't understand that at all. Because, yeah, I mean, everybody that's been dealing with us more recently uh, with all the other stuff that's going on behind the scenes, it, it, they keep saying the same thing that you're saying is, you know, it's nice to finally meet somebody that doesn't have an ego when it comes to this. And I'm like, I, I just I don't know. It just seems odd that I'm that much of an anomaly because it doesn't seem possible to put that much time and effort and work into something just to watch it crumble just because you want to make it all about you. Yeah, well, see, you should be used to being an anomaly, you know, with your panoramic vision and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, well, I had to. So speaking of which, <laughs> that little that little joke that I posted to your page last night seems to be getting rather popular. <laughs> yeah, but people don't, I mean, it... The thing is, though, people are going, yeah, I remember what those are. Oh, I They're know. Not. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not the point of this. It's, do we have to draw a picture for you? Do we need to spell it out? Did I ever tell you the story how I almost made a joke about that when I first started working for the library? I was, I was in a meeting. It was in a training. It was about uh, volunteers. Um, and uh, the a whole bunch of like pretty high uppity ups in the library system were in there. And uh, the lady doing the training is the head of the training department. And she was – and somehow those paper cutters came up and said, yeah, we don't let volunteers mess with those. And I came so close to just holding up my hand in half and going, don't I know it. <laughs> you should have done it. It would have been great. Oh, it, it, it would have been great now that I've been there for almost two years. But at the time, I'd been there for a couple of months. People didn't know me. And – Especially when I'm thinking to my – at the time, I'm like, I really want to get a full-time job here at some point. I really don't want to piss anyone off. Uh, and now I'm, I'm kind of – I'm kind of set. It's it, – amazingly, it is harder 
to get fired from the organization I work for now than it is to get fired from Southwest Airlines, a company that has union protections. Granted, that union doesn't do jack squat for its employees, but I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, and I I understand your, your trepidation, but you have to remember, I'm the guy that stood up in front of site directors, CSLs, and the whole world and said, hey, if we pass each other in the hallway, just assume I'm looking at you. It makes life easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good stuff. And it was funny <laughs> because everybody in the class that knew me started busting out laughing, and the CSLs and the site director were looking at each other like, is he making a joke? And then they realized everybody else was laughing, so they started laughing too. I'm like, yeah, no point in being uncomfortable. I spent way too much of my life doing that. I don't I do not do that anymore. I'm like, yeah, if you can't take a joke, go away. Yeah. All right. There so, you go. There you go. So I did want – so at the whole Southern Conference – Republican hoo-ha thing, there were uh, theoretically at least some presidential candidates. So I thought it would be kind of fun if we looked at the field of the presidential candidates who have announced officially so far. And uh, um, and before we go on to more, you know, more important and entertaining subjects other than politics, but kind of go through that list and then say if the election were held today of the people who have officially announced, who would we each vote for? So do you still have that list there in front of you? Uh, yes. Uh, the list it has been modified a little bit because John Bolton was still considered declared when it came out, but he's no longer a candidate. Then we have Governor Jeb Bush, Dr. Ben Carson, Senator Ted Cruz, uh, Carly Florina, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, Governor Rick Perry, Governor Bobby Jindal, uh, Senator Marco Rubio, Senator Rick Santorum, uh, Governor Santorum's Scott, running again. Scott Walker is listed yet not yet declared, um, but I think everybody's under the assumption that he's going to since he is technically fundraising right now. I think that's honestly one of the reasons why he hasn't declared yet because there's no restrictions on his fundraising yet. Yes. Yep. Gotta love those little uh, loopholes. And the, are those all the Republicans? Uh, those are all the ones that I'm able to find. Yes, there was. Okay. Hang on. There was at least one more. I'm trying to find his name because uh, Grouchy interviewed him on Saturday, and he's not a very uh, well-known name. Hang on. I can pull him up from my Twitter feed because I'm following him on Twitter now because I liked some of the stuff that he had to say. Of course, I don't have my Twitter pulled up right now. Hold on. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Yeah, I have messages again. I should probably see what those are. Maybe he's responding to my request for an interview. That would be awesome. Uh, Mark Everson is a uh, declared candidate for uh, U.S. President Republican Party 2016. However, not a very well-known candidate, but from some of the things that he said, I actually really liked, because, uh, well, I haven't heard it all yet, but Grouchy was pretty impressed. He's supposed to be sending me the audio. I'm not sure whether he's going to run Bolton this week or him. He hasn't told me yet. Heck, they're, they're short. He may do both. I don't know. But, yeah, that's the only other one that I know of for sure that's declared. Okay. And on the Democrat side, there are, what, two candidates, correct? Uh, on the Democrat side? Yes. So far, I think there are only two that are officially confirmed, which is, of course, uh, the Hilda Beast. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, Hillary and uh, um, uh, Bernie. What the hell is his last name? Sanders. Sanders. Like, the, oh, the chicken dude. I don't know why I always forget his last name. You'd figure a fat kid would remember a last name like Sanders. Nice. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, if the election were held today, who would you vote for? Um, if the election were held today, I honestly don't know who I would vote for, only because I'm still holding out hope that Walker actually does declare, because I like most of what he's doing. Um, having to choose from the folks that have actually declared right now, um, I'm afraid at this point I actually wouldn't be able to make a choice, because I don't really see anybody else that stands out for me. Um, that being said, I really would like to get no more, uh, get to know more about the uh, gentleman that we were just talking about, Mr. Mark Everson. I don't think he's got much of a chance since he's a fairly unknown candidate, but I'd like to see if maybe we can help him change that. Um, 
But as far as who I would vote for if I had to pull the lever today, uh, out of everybody that's there, I would say it would probably be a toss-up between either Rubio or Cruz. At least for okay. the ones that have, that have actually declared for a Sounds good. I uh, If I was voting today, it would be Bernie Sanders. I, in, in fact, I'm contemplating re um, changing my what's it called uh, voter registration temporarily back to a Democrat so I could vote for Bernie Sanders in the primaries. Nice. So that that that's commitment there. If you're gonna if you're willing to change your party uh, affiliation to be able to vote for the guy, I I like him a lot. I like what he has to say. And um, I think he's got about snowball's chance in hell of winning, most likely. But I think he's gonna he would do a better job than pretty much any of the other jabronis out there. Um, I mean, there there are things about some some of the Republican candidates. Admittedly, I'm I'm not following politics hot and heavy, so I'm not in the ins and outs of everything that's going on. What I've heard from most of the current GOP candidates. Uh, there aren't any of them that I would go, oh, OK, I'd be OK with uh, with him being president. Most of them are honestly, let's let's be honest with the with the exception of Bernie Sanders at this point and uh, some of those other no name GOP candidates who have also a snowball's chance in hell. Every other candidate is big businesses, bitch. I, I, all of them are have been bought and paid for by a variety of corporate entities and special interest groups. So sadly, anymore, if we honestly think things are going to be that much different, whether or not Ted Cruz is in office or whether or not Hillary Clinton is in office, uh, we're crazy because the uh, the same interests, the same um, corporate interests, political interests are pulling the strings. So that's why it's, I'd rather have one of these, you know, no name people uh, from the GOP or Bernie Sanders get in there because at least they're not on the dole as much as these other people. Well, I mean, I can kind of see your point there. I still think we'd probably be a little bit better off if we had somebody with slightly more conservative leanings in there. But I don't hold my breath as to be completely disillusioned at this point. I have to admit, and this is. This is pretty bad to say, but the – and I, I'm – as I say this and keep in mind that I'm someone that believes that there is no one philosophy that has all the answers um, and that uh, I obviously – I myself personally do not have any or all of the answers. But I've gotten to the point the more and more I hear from modern conservatives – uh, the more and more I just see conservatism as it is right now as a completely invalid option for getting anything accomplished other than uh, corporate America getting whatever the hell they want. Not that the Democrats are doing anything better, mind you. They're, they're not. But I, conserve, modern conservatism, as far as I'm concerned, is an utter and abysmal failure because you've got either – it, it's a whole bunch of ask history of either families like the Duggars and the Duck Dynasty people. Um, so you've got religious, the right wing religious kooks going nuts over over these, you know, ridiculously bizarre families. Um, you've got the war hawks, and then you've got the corporate interest bitches, and that's that's pretty much what the GOP is at this point. Again. It's not like the Democratic Party is any better because they're just bitches to labor unions and the same corporate entities and the kooks on the extreme left that are obsessed with global warming. So I'm I just I, everything I see so many people post stuff on Facebook that are of the conservative slanting and I just look at it and go, you people are effing crazy. This it just makes no sense. This philosophy Makes no sense anymore, in my humble opinion. Yeah, well. Send hate mail my way. That's fine. Oh, one last thing that I thought was friggin' hilarious that I have to share with you. I just love how you just don't even, you're like, yeah, whatever. 
No. You, you well, don't I mean, we, 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 we've had this conversation so many <laughs> times. Know. There's just not any point in going over it again because I personally believe that when conservatism is done and done correctly, which it hasn't been being done correctly for quite some time, it works every time that it's tried. Uh, <clears throat> this whole network idea would be a prime example because that's the that's the belief system I've put in behind it is, you know, you keep trying, you don't ever give up, you don't wait for somebody else to come do it for you, you just find a way to get it done. And slowly but surely, that's exactly what's been happening. And it, 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 that's why, to me, conservatism works. The problem is, no matter which side of the, the aisle you're on, right now we have a perverted version of liberalism, and we also have a perverted version of conservatism. And I think we need to get back to the natural roots of both. Because we used to have the ability to be liberal and be conservative and find ways to still come together. We don't have that anymore because we have these completely bastardized, polarized versions of these philosophies now. Uh, we have liberalism that's being hijacked by socialists. And I'm sorry, socialism does not work very well. The problem is we as a human human species, are, are a lot of us are lazy. If we don't have to put the work into it, we're not going to because if somebody else's work is going to be able to be uh, be benefited to by us, there's a lot of folks that will just sit back and do nothing. Case in point is the welfare state as it sits right now. I don't think that there should not be some sort of a safety net, but I'm tired of government officials finding ways to turn it into a spider web to use it as more control. That I agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I would say that I think equating having a strong work ethic to a political philosophy is a misnomer. Um, I mean, I can see where you're coming from, but I don't think that you're running your business really in a quote unquote conservative manner. Um, but maybe you are. Uh, who knows? Um, but yeah, we we have had this conversation many times, and it's. Uh, not only that, if but we've you now want to hear, you can go back to the archives. Break by fifteen minutes too. So, <laughs> oh yeah. So let's let's talk about some fun stuff. What did uh, what else did you have in mind? Well, actually, well, one last thing. Then we're gonna have to take a quick break because we've blown up by like fifteen minutes, and then we'll come back and then f uh, fix uh, finish the rest of the show talking about the fun stuff. I thought this was completely hilarious. This was actually left in my inbox when I changed over my uh, the profile picture on my personal page to the one that's there now. Uh, a family member of mine left this in my inbox, and I thought it was hilarious. Well, we're moving on now, moving on to the east side, on to a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on now, moving on to the. I used to do that walk, the Jefferson walk. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, needless to say, I checked my inbox yesterday. And there was no, no no typing with it, no nothing, just the link. And I open it up, and I'm like, what the? And I was like, oh, my God, that's so funny. <laughs> I loved that show. All right. So, anyway, we have officially blown way past scheduled break time. So, we're going to have to take a really quick break. Only going to play a couple things, and we'll be right back. The internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. This is JD. And this is Stacy. Join us Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, for Game On. Remember, lock up the children and the old folks. Game On, the home of living conservative to conservative. Where no one is safe, and no one is spared, not even the hosts. Oh, like that was supposed to be a spin, spin cycle. cycle. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We love you anyway. Right round, baby. Self right round. Self-monitoring Ebola anyway. radio strikes again. <laughs> anyway. Anybody uh, see the host monkey? Today. Where's the host monkey? Where's the host monkey? For God's sake, I need an antidote. Just anyway, do your rant. Let's pop out of the cycle has to do with <laughs> Find us on Twitter at JD and Stacy. You're listening to K98talk.com. Are you conservative in a world of liberal? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you're not alone. 
Hey, I'm Daniel Stafford, host of The Stafford Voice, and I'd like to invite you to tune in each Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, where I'll break down the events of the week, and together we'll learn about how they affect you. So, sit back and get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio, right here on K98 Talk. Folks, we're back. We're live. It's clobbering time. I'm Rick Robinson, joined by Dave Brown, and we've got about 15 minutes left of the show. I'm going to change gears, talk about some fun stuff, because I can hear Dave's blood pressure rising as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But this is a show for fun and excitement. Really? going to bust out? Really? <laughs> Indeed. Because that's how I, that is how I roll. You need help. All right. So anyway, um, hope that most of you have gotten caught up with the comic book TV shows and um, their finales. Caught up. Uh, I said. Caught You know what? I'm fixing up the plug. (laughs) Now I remember why I don't like working with you. No, I'm just playing. Excuse me. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so anyway, I hope you've uh, caught up with the comic book uh, TV shows because if you haven't, you might want to turn the channel because uh, we're about to give some spoilers because we are going to spend the last few minutes talking about those. Um, I have to say right now, Flash is probably my all-time favorite of the comic book shows that's out right now. It, 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 oh, my God, it is so good. Um, it, the, that finale, holy crap. The just everything that they did they well, the showing the scene from the the new series Legends of Tomorrow did you see the 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 trailer for that by the way uh no i must have missed that oh my god it's it's on youtube it's great uh legends of tomorrow the third dc show that's going to be on on cw it's uh got the adam firestorm captain cold heat wave uh white canary which is uh sarah lance and um, a hot girl, and and it's uh, it's going to be awesome. And that the scene there, the part where Barry's running through uh, the Speed Force, there's a moment where he looks and he sees a bunch of people, in, including the Adam, um, together. At what the hell, uh, hold on. You have an ad play or something. Sorry. My computer's acting stupid. Are you hearing a first Sega commercial? I'm hearing something, but I'm only hearing a little bit of it. That was weird. Sorry. I had a website open and decided to start playing a commercial. I hate that, by the way. Those. Oh, God. Anywho. Um, son of a bitch. I lost my train of thought. Oh, when he's running through the Speed Force and he's starting to see flashes of things through time. So let's talk about the things he sees. At at one point, he sees his past. He sees a Flash museum. He sees uh, Killer Frost, which those of you don't know, uh, Caitlin in the comics is Killer Frost. Then he sees a – there's a part where you see uh, the Atom and a bunch of other people standing together and it looks like about to happen in a battle. That's from Legends of Tomorrow. Um. But then what I think probably my favorite part of that episode is as the reverse flash is getting ready to get into the pod. Oh, Rip Hunter is also in that Legends of Tomorrow show. Just thought I'd mention. And he's looking at the the time sphere. He says Rip Hunter would be proud. And then uh, then out of the out of the wormhole comes Jay Garrett's hat. Like, oh, my God. Oh, we're going to have um, the multiverse and we're going to have the Golden Age Flash. It's going to be fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, I did. A, I did a big nerdy dance just now and when yes. I watched it. So, see, the sad thing is, since I'm not much of a comic book guy, I didn't actually figure out what, was, what quite was going on with the hat. <laughs> but I figured it had to be something bad because he was like, um, that's my cue to leave. 
Yeah. So at least back yeah, that was so. uh, <laughs> that was great. I just and you know what? What's what I'm sad about is the fact that it looks like, and again, spoilers. Uh, it looks like he is now gone, and uh, I can't remember the actor's name, but the guy who has played the Reverse Flash slash Harrison Wells is awesome. He is so freaking great. And it's going to be sad not having him on the show anymore. Uh, now, I mean, can, I'm, can I just talk about the one point of confusion for me for that whole thing? Yes, please. So he, he kills himself, <laughs> right? Which means that the reverse flash never goes back in time, which means that Barry's mom should technically be alive now. I'm confused. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, there was an article actually about um about that that and th- see this is where you really you start talking about you start getting in, in, involved in in time travel and it, it, it you try to wrap your head around it and it it will it gets confusing like for example what if someone travels through time have they just started a loop that never ends uh when when Barry goes back to save his mom, looks through the door and sees him, his future self, who looks at him, holds up his hand and, and shakes his head no, a la uh, Pa Kent in Man of Steel, and then runs on. Um, well, Barry, this new Barry that sees that happen, when he gets to that moment in time, he will look back at a, a past version of himself and see that. And it will continue over and over and over and over. Do they ever get to go past that point? And since that actually happened, when he, then uh, the reverse flash was was killed, does that? Yeah, how does that that affect the time stream? And um, and the fact that uh, Eddie Thon, when um, Aobard was telling him, you know, you you mount to nothing, you, no one's going to remember you. Well, he shot himself. And got killed. Is that the reason why no one remembers him? Is there another part of the Thon family that actually is what Eobard comes from? Will we still get him as a descendant? And his body, Eddie Thon's body, was sucked into the wormhole. There's talk that he might become um, the character Cobalt Blue, which is a Flash villain who is another Thon um, uh, member of the Thon family. So, uh, yeah, it's you. You start to wrap your head around that. And it it kind of hurts. Um, yeah. yeah, time travel has always been a bitch. That's why there's so many different theories about it. I mean, that's like uh, one of the major prevailing thoughts would be that from that point forward, that particular time stream remains exactly the way it was. But at the point when Eddie, Eddie shot himself, there was in an alternate reality created where he got again none of that inf- none of that actual time stream occurred. Um, so I mean, it, it's just I don't know. It, yeah, and so it, it'll hurt. do what? Say that last part again. Time travel makes my head hurt. Yeah, and it, it'll be interesting to see which way they go with it because in the DC canon, there have been various different versions of time travel in the multiverse. Are they going to go with the um, traditional multiverse where there's just vibrations that separate the universes, and essentially they have altered the timeline in this current universe? Or are they going to go with the idea of hyper time, which as as events happen, if something changes, then it creates a whole new timeline. Uh, so, yeah, who knows how that's going to play out. All I know is I cannot wait for season two. Grant Gustin has been phenomenal as Barry Allen, uh, for especially for all the people. Steve, I'm looking at you, who's complaining about Ezra Miller becoming the next Flash reminding them at the before the flash tv show started they were like who is this grant gustin guy he doesn't look like barry allen he's gonna suck he's puny he was on glee i'm like dude the kid's awesome let's get just give him a chance the wait first he, time, was on, he was on glee he was on glee he uh, played an evil warbler see, who guess. was trying to get into blaine's pants See, I didn't know about the Glee thing. That might actually ruin it for me. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, so he, uh, you know, I love you, Steve. Steve's listening. So uh, I just had to give you a hard time. But it, it'll. So that's why I'm. I'm, uh, I'm sad that that you know they aren't bringing 
the TV series, they're not making it part of the bigger cinematic universe, but in a way I'm actually happy because now um, the film people can do their thing. The TV people can do their thing with the exception of a couple characters here and there that the TV folks are, are going to be told, Hey, you cannot use like, for example, arrow in season two had plans to use Harley Quinn. And besides from a little tease of her, uh, they were told you can't use Harley Quinn. Also, one of the reasons why Deadshot was killed off in Arrow was because Deadshot's going to be in the Suicide Squad movie. And they were basically told you can't use him, uh, which sucks because that the Deadshot in Arrow was phenomenal. Uh, and, it, I mean, granted, I think the, the pictures we've seen of Will Smith as Deadshot looks a lot cooler than I thought it was going to. I was real skeptical about that. Um, and not because it, it's a black guy playing the part that was normally played by a white guy. That in and of itself, that doesn't bother me. Um, the only time it bothers me when they change ethnicities or something like that of a character is if the ethnicity is a central part of that character. Um, for example, Tonto having a pasty white man play Tonto was insane instead of having an actual Native American play the character in the uh, in the Lone Ranger. That movie sucked. Abs- I, I've heard that movie sucked. I still haven't seen it. I thought the trailers looked really good, but I just have avoided trailers it. Trailers were the best part. That movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the whole thing with, with Floyd Lawton is every iteration I've ever seen of him, the man is a big-time redneck. Now, granted, you can be a black redneck, and it'll, I'm sure it'll be an interesting. It's it's going to be a good, um, I think, version of the character. Uh, but it just that that's the only thing that when they they mentioned that I was like, wait a minute, he's a redneck. How's that going to work? But we'll see. Um, so yeah, then then let's. So what do you think of Arrow? You said you had uh, confusion about the ending of Arrow. Well, I mean, the whole him driving away in a car, happy ending crap. You know that's not going to last. So I'm just curious as to what they're going to do to draw him back in. Well, if you if you were paying attention quite closely, uh, and back on the Flash when they were looking, when they they went in and Cisco and Caitlin and uh, crap, I'm getting a phone call. One moment. Um, hang on, Skyler. I'm going to have to call you back. I'm doing a show right now. Just give me like five minutes. Uh, that's going to piss good. her off. Mute's, uh, mute's good for that kind of stuff. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm not good with that. Shut up. Anywho, um, but in when when Barry and Caitlin and Cisco went in and found Gideon, they, they saw that, that story, that article that we've seen since the beginning of the show. When you look get, get a close look at the article, it mentions Green Arrow. So... Oliver is going to take up the mantle of Green Arrow. Um, and so he, I think the show is going to continue just being called Arrow, but eventually he is going to have to put back on everything and, and become Green Arrow. Well, I mean, that's that's my whole thing. Is is it going to be him or is someone else going to assume no. the Green Arrow it, mantle since there's technically a change over there? I mean, no, it'll be him. Well, he's going like to right continue. Now, he'll, um, yeah, he's staying on the show. He'll he is that show at this point. I mean, as great as that show, he's really become a star, and he's going to be playing Casey Jones in the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, which makes me want to see it. I haven't seen the other one, but uh, no, I have. Um, it was it was better than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't quite the disappointment I expected. Um, I'm but, going to watch it only because I I know I want to know what's going on when I see the one with Stephen Amell in it. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to at just at some point, something's going to happen and he's going to take back up everything, whether or not he and Felicity stay together. I don't know, um, but we'll see. All right. So actually, at this point, we are down to a couple of minutes. So why don't you remind folks what it is that you do on a regular basis around here so they know to check out your stuff? All right, so on Mondays, I do a show called Around the Ring. It's all about pro wrestling. This week, we are talking about the NXT TakeOver special that was last Wednesday uh, that had the debut uh, in NXT of Samoa Joe, which was a lot of fun. And also, there was the coolest moment in Monday Night Raw in many, many years when Kevin Owens, the NXT champion who used to be known as Kevin Steen on the indies, came out and made John Cena look like an absolute idiot. 
It was amazing. We're going to talk all about that later on today. Uh, also on Sundays, I do the uh, K98X The Fringe podcast where it gives you uh, a, a glimpse of what we're going to do once K98X launches at some point in the future. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, that that shows actually – I've been enjoying doing that. There's no talking. It's just an hour's worth of music, normally about 18 to 20 songs. And uh, I also write a music blog, which you can check out at OklahomaLefty.com. So for Around the Ring, you can uh, hit up Around the Ring OK dot wordpress dot com or go over to our sister station the spark radio network spark radio network dot com forward slash around the ring okay you can find me on the twitter and facebook same handle around the ring okay uh or you know my oklahoma lefty which is just where i am normally hanging out uh twitter gmail facebook all the same stuff oklahoma lefty with a y hit me up love to hear from you all right, so not to put too fine a point on it, but I think you keep forgetting that X is still technically currently running as a Live 365 station as well. <laughs> yes, yes, we do have the – the yeah, I, I need to go in and update that at some point. Um, I keep forgetting how to use that. Live free, if anyone out there is really good at using Live 365, shoot me an email because that thing confuses the utter piss out of me. Actually, what you need to do is um, I'll send you his Twitter information in a second. You need to hook up with JD. Live 365 was his you-know-what when he was over at war. Uh, so he should be able to help you figure out how to get a much better handle on that because he was really good with it. So I will send you his information in a moment. All right, we okay. are now officially a minute over. I'm Rick Robinson. You can find me later this evening on America Off the Rails, a show that runs usually five days a week, sometimes with guest hosts, sometimes with uh, replays as needed. But it is on Monday through Friday. 6 o'clock in the evening central. Also do Finding Common Ground with my host Bryce Robbins, which was originally hosted by this guy here until he decided he needed Mondays off. Slacker. <laughs> Just kidding. I know, I know. It wasn't really your choice, I know. Just giving you a hard time. All right, but anyway, so that's where you can find me. Um, of course, uh, this show is, or that show is available pretty much anywhere. It's on Stitcher. It's on iHeartRadio. It is now available, um, actually, and probably... About to start in about uh, 20 minutes in several different AM, FM markets. I forgot that actually Sweet. starts it. You need to get around the ring on Stitcher. I need you to work on that. Um, actually, what I'm probably going to wind up doing is just giving you the access codes so you can put around the ring on Stitcher yourself. Yeah, do that. Send me that. That'd be awesome. But anyway, we are out of here, folks. It's been fun. Um, I do believe we might actually have a chance to do this one again next Sunday. I think my wife actually is planning on going out of town. so I will not be available. Oh, uh, yeah. Next Sunday, actually next week, for the first time in probably my adult life, I'm taking a full week-long vacation. Holy cow. Yes. Awesome. My parents are flying me and the kids down to Florida. We will be gone from Sunday the 31st, and we'll be coming back the following Sunday. Awesome. We'll have fun then. Yes. All right. Yes. So that's going to do it for this show, folks. I'll be back with you tomorrow or tonight. Sorry. I'll figure something out in a minute once I figure out where the heck I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for inside. It's time for inside. Neon.